The Valdosta Fire Department discusses its two new community risk reduction officers. The Arbor Division holds its Arbor Day celebration. We visit the Copeland African American Museum. These stories and more on this edition of City Focus. Welcome to City Focus. I'm Marcus McConico, the media coordinator for the City of Valdosta. This is the third episode of City Focus in 2021. City Focus is your source for what's happening within your government. Here are the most important topics that are happening in the city. Valdosta Main Street is encouraging citizens to spend some time and money downtown during the month of February for its Love Downtown campaign. Sometimes at the beginning of the year after the Christmas rush, it is a little bit um, slow this time of year. And so, um, you know, just to, to remind people to come downtown and shop local um, when we're fighting the big, the big box stores, you know, especially around Valentine's Day, is, I think it's a big win for them. You can come downtown, buy your sweetheart, a, you know, a Valentine's present, take them out to dinner. This event is a way to focus on small businesses in a time that consumers typically forget to shop small. Visitors are giving a chance to win downtown dollars for each $25 they spend during the month. If you wanted to get entered into our drawing at the end of the month, um, for every $25 you spend in a local downtown business, you get entered to win $200 downtown dollars at the end of the month. So the more money you spend in downtown, the more opportunity you have to win. For more information, contact Valdosta Main Street. The City of Valdosta Utilities Department is continuing its cleanout caps program in an effort to improve the sewer system. The city has implemented a program to inspect all the cleanouts on residences and commercial uh, buildings in the city of Valdosta. And currently we have a crew of uh, inspectors who are going neighborhood to neighborhood to inspect those cleanouts to make sure that they are a good repair, make sure that caps are in place, they were, the cleanouts themselves are not damaged because we're trying to prevent infiltration and inflow into the system as well as trash and debris getting into people's personal system. Because the cleanout caps can be close to residents' homes, city employees will have to walk on citizens' property. It's not hard to see them. They are wearing bright yellow City of Aldosta vests. They also have identification badges, but if you see them in the yard, Unlike a meter reader who stays in the easement to check the meters, these guys are going to have to get up in the yard. They're going to get up close to houses. Some sewer cleanouts are in the easement. A lot of them are on the property side, up by the house, in the backyard, beside the house. Just depends on when the house was built. We'll make all reasonable effort to make contact with the homeowner before they even enter a empty backyard. We encourage citizens to check the city's website and social media pages in order to be informed of when the city employees will be in your neighborhood. We're informing the citizens using our social media outlets. Uh, we are not pre-tagging any neighborhoods beforehand, so we want everybody to pay attention to the websites, to the City of Valdosta website, to our social media accounts. That's gonna tell you the neighborhoods that we're operating in week to week. Um, we're trying to be as forthcoming and give you a heads up as much as we can. For more information, visit ValdostaCity.com. The Copeland African American Museum on the campus of Valdosta State University began in a strange way. It was started in 1989 when Miss Sherrill decided to surprise Dr. Copeland with a pair of boxing gloves that were autographed by Muhammad Ali. 
he decided that he didn't want anything for um, Christmas, but you know, it's the season of giving and everyone gets something during Christmas time. So she surprised Dr. Copeland with these boxing gloves. Fell in love with the idea of collecting memorabilia from African American history. And from that point to 2016, they just continued to collect at different auctions from the East Coast, West Coast, all around. And then they decided to downsize their home and decided to donate the full collection to the Lane Dell College of Business Administration. February is Black History Month, and visitors of the museum have an opportunity to see pieces of black history here in Valdosta. What you will see is only a third of the full collection. We are on undergoing our first rotation, which will take place in March. Um, we typically would like to do every six months, but since COVID came, we waited some more time for everyone to be able to see the first collection. They invite everyone to visit the museum free of charge. The museum is free and open to the public. You can come and see it Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and on Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And for the month of February to celebrate Black History Month, we're open Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Follow their social media pages at VSUCAAM. January was a busy month for the Permits and Inspections Division. There were nearly twice as many building permits purchased compared to the same month in 2020. We had 64 new residential home permits bought, and in January of 2020, compared to that, we had 38 new residential home permits bought. Despite COVID-19, building is strong in the area, which means good things for the local economy. Uh, 2021 is, look, like I said, starting January is looking pretty good, especially for new residential uh, permits, new homes. We are looking, as far as permits, looking really good. Uh, a lot of permits are being bought. Plans being submitted for stuff to going on. A lot of it is remodeling. We're finding a lot of remodel jobs happening. Uh, and many of those that are building are people coming to the area. We are getting some out-of-state folks coming in here, uh, and they're looking, getting out of the big cities and coming to the, the smaller areas uh, where it ain't so full. We have a lot of that going on. There's been a few businesses that have hired uh, our glass. You know, that's 150 folks they hired out there. So, I mean, there's jobs coming in the area. For more information, contact Permits and Inspections at 229-259-3506. Another SPLOSS project has been completed in the city of Valdosta. This project is a sidewalk project along Bemis Road between Lakeland Avenue and Parkview Avenue. Pedestrians will now have a safer walk along that area. We built sidewalk filling in the pieces. There was already sidewalk here between Lakeland Avenue and Pineview Avenue. It'll be a safer experience. They, uh, pedestrians won't be so uh, close to cars anymore on the grass and we'll have handicapped ramps at all the intersections. Each project has its benefits. This project has been asked for for about two or three years, and now it was programmed on SPLOST, and it was, uh, we're hearing citizens are very grateful for it. For more information, contact Engineering. Daniel Colstring and the Valdosta Bike Shop is working with the Valdosta Police Department to get bikes to those in need. We're here with Officer Hancock. We're picking up some bikes he's donating from the city. Uh, these are just bikes that were turned in from um, just citizens here in Valdosta for donation purposes and we're going to take them and get them fixed up, uh, get them safe and everything for donation back to Salvation Army, and then they will put them in the hands of someone who actually needs them to get to and from work or something like that. He believes that being able to give back to the community is important for everyone. Just to give back, I mean, um, it's something that we have the means to do, so why not do it? Uh, my stepdad who owns the bike center also owns Wintersville Fitness, and they've always been advocates to, you know, give handouts wherever they can to help people out. Officer Hancock and the Valdosta Police Department are not the only group that has donated bikes to the bike shop for repair. This has been a community effort. 
That's awesome. Yeah. And the bikes that we're getting, a lot of them are really good bikes. They just need to be tuned to be safe and be ready to go. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's an awesome feeling to be able to help the, the city for sure. If you have a bike you would like to donate, call 229-253-9050. The Valdosta Fire Department is adding two new positions to the department. So we're adding a position here at the Valdosta Fire Department, just a community risk reduction officer at the rank of lieutenant. And this position will be kind of dual role. They'll be in operations, assisting on the fire ground as an incident safety officer. They'll be training with the shift and operations, fire ground tactics and those kind of things. But they'll also be assisting the Fire Prevention Bureau and the Fire and Life Safety Educator. Two new community risk reduction officers will help the fire educator, Sharina Farrell, in addition to their firefighting duties. Like Chief Boutwell said, I will have assistance um, inside of going to the schools, educating other people. Um, I won't be as busy and we can actually get the word out to help the community. Ms. Farrell does a lot of public education. Of course, during the pandemic, it's been a little bit challenging, but we're hoping in the near future, we'll be out in the community. We look at the analytics from years past. We look at history and current trends to find out exactly where we need to put our efforts in education, what topics, cooking fires, those types of things. But we also know our limited resources. Ms. Farrell alone can't educate the entire city. There will be a community risk reduction officer on each shift working at all times. And so she works your, your eight to five schedule typically uh, these community risk reduction officers that are aiding her also in public education are also the ones responding to fires. So they see the fire, they see the cause, um, and then, you know, eventually long range plans may actually become an on shift investigator. So they, they have front row seat, if you will, as to what's causing the fires to help relay that information back to our fire and life safety public educator, as well as assist her in educating the community on what's going on. For more information, contact the Valdosta Fire Department. <music> Detective Heather Turner was named Rotary Officer of the Year for the Valdosta Police Department. Turner was recognized for her work as the department's juvenile detective. She works tirelessly for the victims she comes in contact with. She always puts her victims first. Turner received the award at a luncheon hosted at the Rainwater Conference Center. Also receiving awards at the event were Hank Davis of the Georgia State Patrol and Justin Tucker of the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office. We congratulate all of them and thank them for their service to our community. On February 19th, the City of Valdosta and the Tree Commission celebrated Georgia Arbor Day by planting a tree on the front lawn of City Hall. 2021 was the 35th consecutive year that Valdosta was named Tree City USA. Along with the new tree in front of City Hall, Alpha Alpha Tai Sorority also helped plant a new tree on Valley Street in downtown earlier in the week. These new trees are just a small portion of what the city and the tree commission do in order to take care of the urban forest in Valdosta. We thank the Arbor Division and the tree commission for all they do in taking care of Valdosta's beautiful urban forest. Here's a stormwater tip for the month of February. The stormwater division is encouraging citizens to report water pollution. A common list of illicit discharges include gray water such as laundry, shower, or kitchen water waste, paint, solvents, cleaning products, and other toxic household substances, gasoline, motor oil, or other automotive products, septic tank pump outs, and other types of human or animal waste fertilizers and pesticides, cooking oils or grease. 
Here are some indications of illicit discharge. An unnatural color in the water. Oil sheen floating on the water. Floatables such as toilet paper or suds. A bad odor. Dead fish or other aquatic creatures. To report an illicit discharge, call the Stormwater Division at 229-259-3530. to remind you that February is Love Downtown Month. For every $25 you spend during the month of February, you are placed in a drawing for $250 downtown dollars. We hope everyone enjoys their time in downtown Valdosta. This concludes another edition of City Focus. Be sure to visit our website, ValdostaCity.com. Like us on Facebook, Valdosta City Without Limits. Also like our Valdosta Youth Council page. Follow us on Twitter at City of Valdosta and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Metro 17 Valdosta, to watch City Focus on demand. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time here on City Focus.